Uh, the interesting thing is that we don't know what the limit of GPT-3 is. What we find is that um, but GPT and GPT-2 had uh, different amounts of data in the model and different size of the model. So basically, a couple orders of magnitude more data and model size and training. And as a result, it got better by a certain factor. And from GPT-2 to GPT-3, the same thing happened again. So again, more magnitudes of training data and model size and in linear increase in the performance of the model. And there's not an obvious end to this. So basically, the more data we seem to be putting into these models, and the more we train, the better they get. And as a result, you get a model that is, is weird because it in many ways is superhuman because you can use GPT-3 to have an interview between Hannah Arendt and Albert Einstein. And uh, to somebody who is not an expert on Hannah Arendt and Albert Einstein, this thing is much better than what the person could have written themselves. And it's able to do this across all domains where uh, there was text in the data. So uh, this is really, really amazing because it can now generate so many categories, more than any human being can do. But it's worse than an expert in any of those areas would be because it does not actually have a grounding of what it's talking about. It's just confabulating in a way. And when it makes errors, it's not learning anything from these errors and it's not updating itself. So of course there are people which work on how to make versions of this that can update themselves and integrate back into this and they get better.